Hi, and welcome to Words of Power. I'm Deidre Banks. Today, we're talking about stepping into the blessings that God has for you. God is awesome. We're going to pray, and then we're going to talk about this word right here. So, Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your grace. We thank you, Lord, for your power. We can't do this without you. We need you, Holy Spirit. We need you. God in our lives, because apart from you, we can do nothing, but with you, we can do all things. We thank you, God, that you are our helper. You are our present help in times of trouble. You are a good God. You're Jehovah Jireh, our provider. You're Jehovah Nisi, our banner. You are an amazing God. Jehovah Sikhanu, our righteousness. We thank you on today, Father God, for being with us in this mo- in this moment. Yes, Lord. As you were with Moses, so shall you be with us. As you were with Joshua, so shall you be with us. You exalted him in the right time. We thank you, Lord, that you are helping us. And it's it's not about being exalted, Lord, because we just want to be in the secret place with you. We just want to be with you. We just want to be in your presence, Father God. We want to be with you. And we know that you're with us. You're inside of us. But there's something about being with you in that moment when we are knelt down in our time of prayer. We're walking and we're just, our eyes are on you and we're enamored by you. We're gazing upon you in that moment. There's something special about that, Lord. So help us, Father God, to enter into the secret place with you on today. Help us to get the revelation that you have for us because you're speaking, Lord. And here we are listening. Your servants are listening. So we ask you, Father God, speak, Lord. Speak. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God is so good. God is so good. I'm um, learning how to just just slow in his presence. Because there there's times of rapid fire and there's, there's times of a stillness. And we just want to ride the ways of God. And I've never heard it said like that before, but ride the ways of God, ride the ways of God. When there's a big wave coming in, we're riding the wave. You've seen surfers, they're riding along top of that wave. And there's sometimes when the, it's just a still wave. And so we just want to ride the waves of God. We want to ride the ways of God in scripture through the word of God. Amen. We're going to talk today about stepping into the blessings God has for us. And I just want to talk a little bit about this on today. Uh, with you about stepping into the things that God has for us. And we're going to take a look at Joshua and the Israelites. So at this time, they're getting ready to cross over the Jordan River. And then from there, they're going to go in and possess the promised land. But at here first, they're going to cross over the Jordan River. And Joshua has told them to consecrate themselves because God is going to do amazing things among them. And that consecration is to set themselves apart Amen. So God can do amazing things. And as we go further into the scripture in Joshua 3, Joshua is going to encourage them in the word, encourage them about who God is. And God is also encouraging Joshua that he will be with him as he was with Moses and that he is going to exalt him before the people so that they know that God is with them. We're going to take a look at that and then we're going to talk about stepping in. Verse 7 of Joshua 3. And the Lord said to Joshua, Today I will begin to exalt you in the eyes of all Israel, so they may know that I am with you as I was with Moses. Tell the priests who carry the Ark of the Covenant, when you reach the edge of the Jordan's waters, go and stand in the river. Now we're going to scroll down to verse 13, where guys, and they're going to be instructed to go into the water uh, through Joshua verse 13. And as soon as the priests who carry the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, set foot in the Jordan, its waters flowing downstream will be cut off and stand up in a heap. When? As soon as. As soon as you do that word that God has told you to do, things are going to break open. Things are going to part. As soon as you follow the word of God and the will of God for your life, you're going to see things break open as soon as, as soon as, because there is an instruction. There's a word that God has given you. There's something that God wants you to do. And as soon as you do it, things are going to break open for you. But you need to know what the will of the Lord is. You need to get with the Lord. Lord, what do you have me doing this season? Lord, what is it? And some of you, God has already told you what you need to do. And we need to do it. We need to step in and do whatever it is, because as soon as you do that thing that God has asked you to do, things are going to open up so much. It's going to overflow and those blessings are going to take you. He's going to pour out blessings from heaven that you have not room enough to receive. Your bank account is going to overflow. Things are going to move for you. Whatever it is that God wants to bless you with in that season, 
God is going to do as you do what God has asked you to do. As soon as. Amen. Let's keep going. Verse 14. So when the people broke camp to cross the Jordan, the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. So the priests went before them. I want to say of it as the word of God. Now the priests weren't the word of God. Jesus was the word made flesh, not the priest. But see it as God's going before you. The word's going before you. You're stepping in through the unction of the Holy Spirit, through the word of God that God has given you. You're not trying something willy nilly, but you are pressed in. Now you may not have an exact word, but you're seeking the Lord and you say, I feel led to do this, but you're stepping in based on instructions from the Lord, instructions from the Holy Spirit. You're spending time seeking things out to know what you should do and you will be successful. I want to mention this. If God has told you to do something, you will be successful in that thing because God does not waste our time. He's not sending ourselves around purposelessly. But there is a purpose in the waiting. There's a purpose in the instruction. There's a birthing coming forth. There's a refining fire that's going forth. And so we need to seek the Lord and get with God and say, God, what do you have for me? What is what is 2024? We've already been in this year, but we need to be on 2025 right now. We already He spoke to us about 2024 before we entered in. He's still speaking to you about 2024, but... The instruction about 2024, God has been speaking, people of God. God wants to tell you things. God is not late. I believe God is already speaking to us about 2025 and the next year so we can be ready to walk in victoriously. So we can be ready to walk in ahead of what the enemy is trying to do and pull down what God is trying to do. Because it's both. I'm ahead of the plans of the wicked one. Before it erupts and before it arises, I'm tearing down the plans of wickedness trying to come against me because God is showing me this thing. Look out. There's a trap coming from the enemy's trap, uh, from the enemy's camp. He's trying to get you caught up in this. He's trying to distract you with that. He's trying to wreak havoc in your family. He's trying to, but he hasn't done it yet. So as you're ahead of that thing, you are tearing down the plans of the wicked one in prayer because God has shown you in the secret space the plans of the enemy. So you got his battle plan. And you said, aha, I know how to break it down because my God has a plan in this word. And so I'm going to tear down the plans of the wicked one. And so within that, and aside of that, God is showing you what he wants to do. I want to bless you. I want to carry you through. I want to to revive your family unit. I want to tear down the plans of the enemy, but I also want to bless you, promote you, advance you. I want to take you deeper into the word because I want to give you revelation. I want to spend time with you. I want to adorn you with precious jewels and wisdom of pearls. I want to spend time with you, says the Lord. So as we get with him, he's going to reveal things. And I encourage you, be speaking to the Lord about 2025 and what's coming up next. Yes, press in to what's happening now. I'm not saying that, but I just feel so strongly that we should be forward seeking, that we should be looking ahead. We're in this time now, but we're also asking God what's coming up next. So don't neglect this time. Don't say, oh, I'm not hearing anything about 2024. I'm already in 2025, but be hearing what's coming ahead. Yes, God, I'm in this moment. I need a now word. Give me a word, Lord, as you are speaking to me. Give me a word, Father God, for this season. But yes, I, I, Lord, I want to hear from you what's coming, Father God. And he's going to show you. He's going to show you whatever you need to know. So, but as you're walking with God, we want to be people that begin to look ahead. We want to be looking ahead. We want to, our eyes are focused on Jesus, but you want to be planning things out, planning things out. So you're not just stuck in, like people were just marching with their heads down like this. You know, ever seen uh, people blindly following, just like, oh, I'm just in this, I'm just in this moment. No, you're looking up, God, what do you want to show me? And asking him questions because we're searching it out. And if God doesn't want to show you what's coming up at 24 5 or you open, Lord, what's coming up, then he won't show you. Just, you know, you're not going to see that. But be asking, be curious with the Lord, searching things out with him to find things out because when you get to 2025, you don't want to start asking God, oh, what's for 2025? I'm at today. Before that thing begins, before we go to battle, we need the battle strategy. 
before we step into that river, we need to know the word of the Lord that that's going to part. Otherwise, don't step into the river. There's not a word from the Lord in there. You're going to drown trying to walk across the Jordan River, especially at this time of year. The flow waters are higher than normal. Amen. So we want to have a word of the Lord. We want to have sought the Lord about what we're going to be doing. We want to sought the, seek the Lord. Amen. And if he doesn't show you again, you're asking, you're asking, you're pursuing him. You're pursuing him. Amen. You're pursuing him. Amen. So let's keep going. Now, verse 15. The now the Jordan is at flood stage all during harvest. Yet as soon as the priests who carried the ark reached the Jordan and their feet touched the water's edge. What? It says it again. Yet as soon as. It's, it's despite this. Now the Jordan is at flood stage all during harvest. Why are you telling us? Because we want to know this is a miracle. This is an overcoming. This is significant. As soon as I did the will of the Lord, as soon as I saw that seed God asked me to sow, as soon as I stopped arguing and backbiting, as soon as I laid those problems at the altar, as soon as I sought the Lord about my marriage, as soon as I laid my desires down to receive God's desires for me, as soon as whatever he's asking you to do, as soon as I began to pray for the friend that was bothering me, as soon as I began to receive my healing from God and quote the scriptures over my healing, as soon as I began to war, as soon as whatever it is, whatever it is that God is telling you, as soon as you do that, God is going to open up things for you and you might not see it. So please people of God, don't stop doing it. Oh, it's not working. I got up to pray and all I have is more warfare. Keep praying. As soon as I started to tithe my finances, keep sowing. As soon as I began to quote those scriptures, my pain got worse. Keep quoting those scriptures. Keep confessing the word of God. Keep warring. Because the enemy doesn't want you to get what God has for you. But God is determined to help you. He's determined to see you through. But we have to show up. We have to step in. He can't step in for you. He's not going to drag your feet across the water. But he's going to help you. He's going to encourage you. He's going to give you the word. He's going to empower you through the Holy Spirit. He's going to give you the word, which you have here. And he's going to bring things to your remembrance to the Holy Spirit. So he's going to help you. But you got to step in. You got to come to the water's edge. You can't receive the blessing from back there. You got to step forth. And some of you are hindered or discouraged in your mind because you're, oh, I didn't work last time. Things don't seem to be working out for me. Get that out of your head. Things are working out for you. Things are progressing for you. As you keep going, as you keep stepping, God's going to keep opening. He's going to keep bringing you through. He's going to keep providing because that's who he is. He cannot lie. And my word says he supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. My word says that I more than a conqueror through him who loved me. My word says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. So we have the word of God and God cannot lie. So these promises of God are good and his promises are yes and amen. So we can do it. You can overcome. You can be strengthened in the word of God as you read the word of God. As soon as the priests who carried the ark reached the Jordan their feet touched the water's edge. The water from upstream stopped flowing. It's significant. The priests are carrying the ark. That was a symbol of the covenant that God had made with Moses. Amen. As soon as they did what God had asked them to do, things started to change. The enemy is going to oppose you. He's going to try and get you to not do whatever God has told you to do. He's going to try and make you think that you didn't hear clearly that when you stepped in, it didn't work because you can't see it. But you know who your God is. You know the voice of the Lord and the voice of a stranger you will not follow. You know the word of the Lord because it's in you. It's hidden in you. You know what God is capable of and he's a good God and you know who he's not. He's not a liar. He is out for your best interests. His plans and thoughts for you are good and not of evil for a future and a hope. So when the enemy comes to deceive you, when he comes to try and discourage you, you break it down because you know who God is. He's not a liar, but the enemy is. He's the father of lies and there's no truth in him. So we need to learn who God is and receive the word that God has for you. 
and step in to whatever God is telling you to do because it's going to be glorious. It's going to be upright. It's going to be immovable. When you plan it, you build it on the word of God on a strong foundation, sell it as a rock. When the storms come in, you are going to be sustained. You're anchored in the word. You're anchored in who God is. So when the enemy tries to come against you, you swat them like a fly and you speak the word of God. And you endure and you fight and you're going to see the victory. But you have to take that first step as the Lord leads you. I want to be very clear. Don't step in prematurely. Step in through the unction of the Holy Spirit with the word of God. And if you make a mistake, you miss it. God is with you, but you try to do what God was saying. You try to do what God is saying. Your heart was willing and obedient. And the grace of God is for you. His mercy is everlasting. It's new every morning, but don't not step in. Don't just say, oh, I'm not going to, I'm going to bury my talents in the ground because I'm afraid. No, there's no time for fear. Fear has to be broken off because we have to step in. There's great things waiting for you. So step in. And as soon as you do, you're going to see things open up. 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 Amen. We bless people of God. So I thank you, Lord. Show us you in this hour, Lord. We want to hear from you clearly. Remove any deception, remove any fear, remove anything that's not like you. And help us, Lord, to step into whatever it is you've called us to do in this hour. Because we know it's great. We know what's glorious. We know it's so much bigger than we can even see right now. But we trust you. Our confidence is you. And we're not going to cast away our confidence because there's a great reward. We're going to press into you right now. We love you, Lord. And we thank you for who you are in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you guys. I love you so much. Take care.